Okay guys, here we go with Noodle November for 2024. And this year it's all about twisted pasta. So this year I am making troffia alla boschiola. Probably quite a few Italians out there now telling me how to say it properly, but there you go. And what I'm doing with this one, I'm using um, a pasta bianca. So there's no egg in it. So it's is almost, no, it's not vegan. It's definitely a vegetarian dish. So this collaboration is hosted by Tony over there at Kettle Kitchen. And as I said, it's Noodle November 2024, Twisted Pasta. I'll put the hashtag for the collaboration in the description below. And also a playlist for all the recipes that are being made as at least one a day for the whole of November. On the 3rd of December at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now I'll put the uh, the UK time up there for you because I can't work it out at the moment. I don't want to get it wrong, so I'll stick it up there. Um, there's a live a live giveaway, and all you've got to do to take part in this is to watch every video and leave comments on every video, and there'll be prizes on the day as well, as just as there was last year. Fantastic. Okay then, so I think I better get on and make something. I'm going to start off with the pasta and then we'll bring in the rest of the ingredients to do the, the sauce afterwards. Okay then, so all I need for this one is some semolina or semola and some zero zero grade flour. Now you can use all of either, doesn't matter, but I'm gonna do a mix 50-50, 100 grams of each and a generous pinch of salt some warm water, about 100 mil I'm thinking, but we'll see as we go along. Some cling film, saran wrap to, to wrap it up later on if we need to, a bowl to put things in and some bits and pieces to weigh things out with. So let's get on with it, eh? 100 grams of each of the flowers. They may all fit into one little dish here, so uh, we'll see how it goes, eh? Well, I zeroed straight away, look at that. I'm not making an awful lot, but I'll probably make too much for me, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, it'll all fit in here easily. Just a little bit over. The trouble with these, they never stick down again, do they? You get a little bit of flour on it, that's it, finished. And some zero zero. You can use ordinary flour, plain flour for this, it doesn't really matter, but if you want the authentic Italian sort of taste, a bit of salmonine, a bit of zero zero. No need to uh, sieve all these modern flowers. All the uh, the nasty bits have been taken out and they're light enough anyway. Ooh, a bit over there, Steve, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, he's put it over there. And we're going to mix this. It's going to get these stirred up a little bit together. Going to do this on the countertop. In my case, a sheet of stainless steel. <laughs> Ooh. In with a generous pinch of salt, like I said. There we are. Okay, didn't need that one. You can do it in a bowl if you want, it doesn't really matter. There we are. Hey, it's going all right so far. Make a well in the centre. And then slowly add your water. Now I've got uh, far too much in here, so let's have a see how it goes, eh? Just mix a bit in at a time. And as you stir around, the sides of the, the well get pulled in by the water, so the flour naturally incorporates. You can put a little bit more in if you want, like that. And once it gets um, sticky enough, what we'll do, we'll get in with our fingers as well. A little bit more, I think. I always burst the dam and it always goes everywhere. So just watch it, it's bound to happen. That's about some, here we go. Look, see it's coming out the sides. <laughs> oh, these Italian nonnas are looking at me going, what the heck is he doing? That's about 100 now, so it's not far off. I reckon it's time to get messy. Do it. 
picking up all the dry bits as we go, look. And what you don't want to do, you don't want to force anything into it that doesn't want to be there. There's no point trying to get it all in there. The water picks up as much as it wants and that's it done. So what we'll do, we'll clean this off in a minute. In fact, we'll leave a bit of it there just for dusting. And I reckon, I reckon that's about it, guys. See, it's, it's feeling nice already. A little bit damp in the middle still, so a little bit more. I reckon that's it. Right. I didn't bring a scraper out with me, so it doesn't matter. A day to get dirty. And all we're going to do now is start kneading. And when we knead, push away, fold in. Push away and 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 fold in, and then change hands because you get tired quite quickly. <laughs> the flowers take a, a fair while to hydrate, what well, hydrolyze or hydrate, whatever you want to call it. What they do is they soak up the water. And this is what makes the gluten grow as well as the protein. Well, the gluten is the protein. But... Now, some people like to stop about now, give it a roll wrap up, and then come back and carry on just to let the water hydrolyze a bit better. So I'm going to do that while I clean this mess up here. About five minutes. I've actually found a decent cling film that I can tear. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, normally it gets a big big mess and it's all one ball. If you don't want to use plastic you can just use a damp tea towel, no problem. Don't put this in a fridge, leave it indoors or in my case just leave it lying around at the temperature you're working it. Okay, that's rested for five minutes. Another five minutes of kneading. And it is lovely and smooth now, look. Perfect. So, time to make the trophia. Now, this could take me a while. <laughs> okay then, a couple of ways you can do this. You can either take a piece off and make a big long sausage, about a centimetre or so. Half an inch. Nice and elastic look. And then with your knife just cut off centimetre pieces. Right, and all we do then is take a piece, roll it out a bit so it's nice and thin like this. And with your hand in an arky sort of movement, just press down with the edge of your hand. Okay, and bring it towards you. And there we have a spiral. Not exactly a spiral, but it's definitely twisted. I mean, you watch the nonas do this, they do it in one fluid motion, like I can't do that. There we are. Don't worry about the sizes, and the more uneven it is, the better. And you see it twisting there. There we are. A bit of a long one, this one. Yeah, too long. Try and do it with this camera. So hand like this and pull it towards you in a curve. Ready? There we go. Don't press too hard because you'll totally squash the pasta. And you can see it twisting, look. Yeah, the other way you can do it is a lot of them. Just hold the dough pull a bit off, roll it in one fluid motion and it's done. And flick it out of the way, so roll, pull, done. There you go. Roll, pull. Roll and pull. Okay guys, well I'll bring you back when they're all done. Just need enough for me really. And the rest of the uh, rest of the dough, I'll put that in the fridge and use it another time or a freezer even. Okay, that'll do for me. <laughs> Gonna save the, uh, the rest of the dough. Lovely dough, look at how smooth that is. 
Can't make much out of that, but I will. I don't know what yet. So that can go either in the fridge or the freezer. Cover that and um, we'll get on with the, uh, the sauce. You see, do you remember the old cling film used to stick to everything, didn't it? This one just seems to sit there. Right, after. Stop it going hard anyway. Back in a bit. So here's the ingredients on the table for the Boschiola sauce. So uh, what we got then, well, some olive oil. Um, you can use extra virgin if you want, but I think it's wasted because we're cooking in it. <laughs> yeah, so... I don't know why you'd want to use an expensive oil for cooking in, especially when it gets quite warm. Fresh mushrooms, dried porcini, we got some garlic, we got some parmigiano reggiano, salt and pepper, tomatoes, oh, and a leaf coming down, got a leaf in it somewhere, a bit of butter and some parsley. Now this is where a lot, in my opinion, this is where a lot of chefs go wrong or a lot of let's say TV celebrity chefs, they take a recipe that's nice and simple a recipe that's been made for centuries, they try to make it their own by adding X, Y and Z. They'll chuck too many herbs in, five or six herbs, and they're fighting each other in a dish. Or they'll add loads of creams or different types of cheeses and there's no need. Stay simple and you can't go far wrong. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to prep all the ingredients before we start cooking. Otherwise, it's a bit tight on this little table here. So first off, the first thing we must do is soak these porcini in lukewarm water. Come here, that'll be big enough. Yeah, for about half an hour. You can use any dried mushrooms. Um, what's the other ones? Oh, wood ears, I love wood ears. They're fantastic in Chinese dishes. But um, these, I managed to find porcini. So we don't get porcini here in the UK growing outside. Ah. Two seconds, back with a knife. If you're lucky enough to find fresh porcini where you live, then use them by all means. But um, I got the dry ones. And the thing with the dry ones is we're going to use the liquid in the dish. There's extra flavour anyway. So that is 30 grams. Couldn't see my water then. Losing it, Steve. So warm, warm water. Warm, warm water. Yeah. 250 ml of warm water. And we're going to soak those for about half an hour, like I said. Let's get them all soaked. Get them dunked in and they'll soon start swelling up. I'm just going to give these a quick wipe. The mushrooms are fresh. Uh, sat in the fridge for a couple of days. They've got a little bit of uh, compost on them, but it'll be all right. Just going to wipe all these off. Give it a quick sharpen. I do this every time I use a knife, so. Take the metal filings off. Probably easier just to go mad with a whole lot, isn't it? Yeah. Parsley next, just roughly chop this as well. Put it back in the same tub. Scrunch it all up together. Is that it? I think we're nearly there, aren't we? Yeah, let's get this done as well. Bit of um, Parmigiana Reggiana. Just gonna finely grate this for later on. Here we are, nice little strands, put that back in there so don't lose it. Just the garlic now, so. Now the problem with rechargeable microphones is you have to recharge them and I didn't, so I'm doing a voiceover. This is not some cheap Chinese Kung Fu movie where the words don't match the mouth. OK, and that's all I'm doing now is wringing out the soaked mushrooms. Note to self, wear gloves next time because my hands smelt like a pair of old socks for a few days afterwards. No amount of scrubbing would get the smell out. Pour the liquid into a coffee filter or a good couple of layers of kitchen tissue. Let the liquid soak out because we're going to use this again. And we're taking out all the, uh, the gritty bits from the mushrooms. Give the final bit a squeeze and there we go. A good glug of olive oil in your pan. Get the oil warm in with the garlic and all we're going to do is brown it off a little bit. Give it a bit of colour before we add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, that'll do. 
In with the chopped parsley. Very quickly. In with the soaked mushrooms, and you can chop these a bit, but I'm not going to bother. In with the soaking liquid. This is going to take a while to boil off this, so back in a bit. Oh, smells lovely, this guys. <laughs> I'm just going to boil this down now until the liquid's gone. Well, just about it, I reckon. So, in with the fresh mushrooms now. And again, we're going to cook these until these have given up all their liquid as well. This is why I wasn't too fussy about chopping them, because you can just as easily do it here, look. I could just dive in there now. <laughs> this is where I think too many herbs would have ruined this dish. It's all about the mushrooms, really. Woodsman, you know. In with the tin of tomatoes. You can use whole tomatoes and cut them, or chopped tomatoes expertly cracked open. There we go. And again, we're going to cook this down until most of the liquid is gone. Okay, in with a good generous pinch of salt and pepper. Which way is the wind blowing? That way. A little bit more light pepper. Okay, I'm thinking that that is about it. I want a little bit of liquid left in the dish. So I'm going to stop there and put this to one side while we get the pasta cooked. So generous pinching of salt into the rolling boiled water. And in with the pasta. Now, so at this point, I realise I've made far too much sauce. OK, here we go then, guys. And because we've used tapioca, there's a little bit, there's more protein in it. So it's going to take a little bit longer to cook. So maybe five minutes. We'll keep tasting anyway. I'm going to put half of this sauce away for now. OK, that'll do. Just tasted it and it's just about al dente. And it's gonna cook a little bit more in a minute anyway. And we're gonna strain this into here. I normally do it in the sink, but I haven't got a sink out here. Oh, I like that. In with the pasta and it will finish cooking in here a little bit. Oh, get it all coated. I'll tell you what, I wish we had smell of vision In with the butter, got a bit too much there. So I'll stir that in. You can leave the butter out if you want, but it gives it a bit of a glaze. Now if it's looking a bit thick, just add a splash of the starchy water. Just a splash. There we are. There we are, then. And I'll put the, uh, the cheese on when I serve it up. I think, guys, that is it. Back in a bit. Oh, looking forward to this. Okay then, a little bit of twisty pasta first. Just right, just right. A bit of crunch to it. I think that's from the semolina. No, right, let's have some of this sauce. Where is it? Oh, no. Mmm. Mmm. That is so mushroomy. It's lovely. I bet you can't guess what I've got for my supper tonight. <laughs> God, I can't eat all of this now. Oh. Well, I hope you enjoy this one, guys. Let me know if you try it. It is simple and it is quick. The trouble is filming it takes three times as long as what the cooking does, you know. So I'm going to have a few more mouthfuls now. Save the rest for later and um, hopefully settle down and watch some of the other recipes in the collaboration. Don't forget to check them out. They're all in the description down below on the playlist. Take care, guys. Catch you on the next recipe. Bye.